Sraznakum, happy feast day. In the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. This gospel that we often have for the feast of the Mother of God, most frequently, is a great example for us because we have it, not because the Mary we are celebrating is the Mary of the gospel, because she exemplifies what that Mary was doing. She kept her eyes on the one thing needful. She chose the better part. We would not let her eyes be taken from that. She was not overly distracted about much serving and working, even though she did work. We see even in the icon of the Annunciation when she is sitting there weaving, when she is using yarn and, and making things. She's working. She works. She lives as a mother. She lives as, as, a, as the betrothed of Joseph, and she works throughout her life. But her primary focus, even in doing those things, was keeping her eyes on Christ. As a young girl being taken into the temple and worshiping in the Holy of Holies, her eyes were on Christ, always on the one thing needful. And as the second part of this gospel, this woman proclaims, blessed is the womb that bore thee and the breast from which thou didst nurse. And that we see is a fulfillment of the prophecy of Gabriel already. Blessed art thou among women, as the as Elizabeth says as well, this is one who is blessed and highly favored of God from the ages. That this feast of the Dormition, not only do we remember the falling asleep in the Lord of the Virgin Theotokos, but we commemorate her being taken up into heaven by Christ. As we see the apostles who were brought from the ends of the earth on clouds to be there, she wished them to be with her at her repose. But Thomas was delayed a few days, much as he was with the resurrection of our Lord. And because of this, he gets to be twice the witness to one of the greatest miracles in history. Of course, the greatest miracle in the Lord's resurrection, which was really natural, not so much a miracle for the Savior, but also of the Mother of God's being taken up bodily as well when they open the tomb and she is no longer there. He gets to witness to this. And by all rights, as many of the fathers say, the mother of God should not have died. Sin causes death. She didn't commit sin. But yet she was born into the same effects of sin as we are. Her flesh was subject to decay just like ours is. And... The devil could not hold her. Much as when the Savior appeared in Hades and he was tormented in travail that he had accepted the very Lord of mankind to his midst and accepting the Mother of God, he made yet again a huge, huge mistake because he had no rights over her. He could not keep her because she was pure. She was holy. And this truly is a feast of the human person. Much as the transfiguration is, in showing us that we can see the light of God if we live a transfigured life. That this feast shows us that we too do not have to be subject unto death and subject to the devil. We do have a decision in that. We do have some say-so. Quite matter of fact, we have a lot of say-so. We choose to sin. We choose to become angry. We choose to let lust get the best of us. We choose to be distracted by things. But if we kept our eyes constantly on the one thing needful, as the mother of God did, the devil would have no rights over us. But for all of us who have sin, which is everyone in this room, we have a choice still to repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is with us now. If we change our lives from this moment, from this day, from this hour, from this minute, as St. Herman tells us, and follow Christ's holy will, we too can become Christ-bearers, God-bearers. Theotokos, and it says, not that we're going to give birth to God, but Christ truly dwells in our hearts. We spend so much time trying to find God outside of us, distracting ourselves with things and trying to find peace outside of us, but the true answer is within our hearts and seeking the kingdom of God that is within us, the one thing needful. So follow her example. 
live a life of repentance, which is constant moving toward God. As Father Seraphim Rose of Platina tells us, if you do not find Christ in this life, you will not find him in the next. So seek to find him with each and every action of every day. We do not know when we are going to be called. Most likely, like the Mother of God, we're not going to have Gabriel come to us and tell us today we're dying. There have been saints who have had this happen, but most likely that will not be us. So we must prepare for that minute of judgment. We do not know when it will come. But if we live a life that is dedicated to Christ, in purity, in continence, and abstinence from things that are harmful to us, but a life that is positive and completely turned toward the Holy Trinity, evil has no rights over us, but only Christ. So remember the Mother of God every day who stands in prayer for us, who stands miraculously guarding our hearts, Dedicate your lives to her way of life. Call upon her for her holy prayers, because she truly desires the salvation of all and to all to be united to her Son. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Amen. Amen.